IR is moving quickly to a clinical discipline and I think UFE is the, the prime example of how this could work. Um, that means that you have to see the patient in an outpatient setting to really inform her about the options. You can explain the procedure, the positives, the negatives, what can be expected. This cannot be done by someone else. This cannot be done by the gynecologist. The most important factors when considering patients for UFE is um, to correlate symptoms, symptomatology with imaging and to have a proper clinical history. So what a patient wants to achieve with the procedure is also important. So given the experience over the years, the ideal candidate is a woman who is not considering childbirth in the next years, who has really strong symptoms like heavy menstrual bleeding and a polyfibroid uterus, which is hard to treat by other means of uterine conserving treatments. Well, clinically speaking, it is difficult to make the distinction between fibroids causing symptoms and adenomyosis causing symptoms in these women suffering from heavy menstrual bleeding, pain, and bulk related symptoms. However, we as radiologists have tools to make this distinction. When embolizing adenomyosis, the embolic material is a little bit smaller in order to reach deep infarction into this adenomatous tissue. So instead of using particles 500 to 700 for fibroids, we work with 500. You have to go to full stasis in the uh, horizontal part of your uterine artery on both sides. I do think that UAE is underutilized uh, for adenomyosis cases. Indeed, too many women uh, visit the gynecologist and the end result is a hysterectomy, which I believe is wrong. We should offer these women the embolization procedure in order to preserve the uterus and also their femininity, their feeling of being a woman. The success rate of embolization in postpartum hemorrhage is actually quite high. In most papers it's quoted as being between 85 to 95 percent um, and some studies even report up to 100 percent success rate. Although there's a range of embolic materials available, in postpartum hemorrhage the embolic agent of choice would be gel foam. The reason you'd use gel foam is because it's easily available, it's cheap, it works very effectively and it works fast as well as being a temporary agent. In postpartum hemorrhage embolization, the main complication to watch out for is non-target embolization. This can occur when you don't have good quality imaging and in a very um, tense situation where you may have a patient who's bleeding to death, it's um, very easy to overdo the embolization and reflux of the embolic material can result in non-target embolization. To avoid this, it's useful to have good technique, um, to have high quality imaging and of course to have operators who are well trained performing the procedure. And finally, in order to have successful treatment, it's very important to have a good multidisciplinary team working and to have good communications between clinicians and the interventional radiologist. It's important that the gynecologists are aware of the availability of interventional radiology and the availability of the procedure.